Hey everyone, welcome to episode three, episode three already of Real Talk with myself, Scott Heaney, Shihan, what's your name? Terry? Terry Burkett. Terry Burkett. It's the name that everybody loves to hate. <laughs> Haters going to hate. <laughs> yeah, they do, and we're starting to pick them up. We're starting to pick them up. That means we're doing good. It is. That means that we're creating conversation and people are, uh, that you, now you know you're, that they're listening or watching, so that's good. Yeah. And this is it. When, when, we're in, when we're interacting on Facebook, everyone thinks that it's nasty and it's trolling and stuff, but you're not getting the, you're not getting the emotion that I say things. I'm not saying things to be nasty. I'm mm-hmm. saying it like I would talk to you now. You know, when I say it, half of it is tongue in cheek as well. But mm-hmm. there's some truth in it. But when you write that down in text form, there's no emotion, and people all people just get offended by whatever you say. Yeah, that's bad. That's one negative thing with social media, or reading stuff and that, because you never know the emotion or intention no. or whatever behind it. Um, actually, and it depends what depends what mood you're in. I was if just going to read it. Yeah, if yeah. You're just... a, if you're in a shitty mood, you'll read it. In, in a shitty mood exactly actually it kind of has nothing to do with martial arts but some friends that i grew up with got a couple of them got into this weird thing uh just yesterday on facebook and and i stepped in i was just like God, what are you doing we've all known each other since we're kids right like what's what's going on here and it turned out and because we're one of them was trying to give advice to this guy about financial stuff the guy that was getting ticked off had just lost his job recently with COVID. Has gone down this like hole and stuff, etc. So he was triggered by it. Oh wait, yeah. I'm not supposed to say the word triggered. Don't say triggered. <laughs> pissed off or upset. He was pissed off. So he got pissed off by it. So, but once we brought that out, everybody was. Everyone's okay. Everyone's okay. Anyway, yeah. it's funny how you're wearing that T-shirt, Bruce Lee T-shirt. You you recognize this T-shirt? You remember this one? Yes, I do. For the kids at home, what is it? Well, you tell me. Isn't it from uh, from Enter the Dragon, uh, uh, Han? It is. It's yeah. Han's tournament. Yeah. But I wore this T-shirt when we first did our interview on Oh, Way. wow. All right. Yeah. Now, if you haven't seen that, click in it. I'll put in a link in there. Make sure you guys watch. Go back and watch look. it. Yeah. So, that yeah, was I mean, a few... that was a few years back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, a couple of people have popped up now that are doing it since then. But yeah, we, what was it? Was it 2017 or 2018? I can't remember. 18, probably. I don't know, but I'll put a link in there for people. Yeah. So have a look at that. Today, the flavor of today's show uh, is going to be to answer the question, "What is a student?" So Terry came up with this one. Uh, Terry, why did you come up with this uh, this theme for today? Well, our our friend, uh, a mutual friend, Pat Pinto, who's got the Kyokushin Shuffle, mm-hmm. he's brought his ebook out, Forever the Student. Yeah, I got to uh, read this, that. This, this, yeah, yeah, you've got to get this top top guys in there that are laying down just nuggets of gold. Not just because I'm in it. There's <laughs> loads of people in there. It's a fantastic book, but Pat gets it. He really gets it, and this comes across in in and what he's doing and what he's saying about being a student, always wanting to learn and do more. Mm. Um, which, and, which, and recently I've been looking into what is a student and people are asking what makes a good student and, and, and whatever. But when you hear student, like a karate, let's talk about karate because that's what we're talking about. Mm. So a karate student, what do you think a karate student is or are or should be? What do I? Well, it's 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 interesting. I, I'll answer in a second, but this is perfect segue because um, um, yesterday was a combination conversation with uh, Shihan uh, Janine, and mm-hmm. she talked as she actually talks about this that she is looks at herself more as a student than a teacher, even though she's this world champion in kata. Well, actually, I messed that up. Yeah. She's a European champion kata, but anyway, at a high level. And she gives. And she needs, sem- a, she needs a Xi'an. She's a sixth dan. And she is a Xi'an, a sixth dan. But she said that she feels more comfortable. I know I want to paraphrase really what she's saying. You watch it yourself. But that uh, 
she is always she prefers to be the student always learning and and you know uh gaining yeah. her knowledge and stuff rather than being in the front um for myself um i think you all for I always want to be a student. That's the way my mind works, but not even just in karate and everything. Whenever I get an interest about something, it, you know, uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. I'll go down like a rabbit hole of, of trying to figure out as much as I can to have some sort uh, of. See, you said you said the key thing there. Then you go down a rabbit hole trying to figure out as much as you can. Yeah, I think in terms of karate wise, mm -hmm. everyone thinks they're a student. But I think the majority are just followers. Mm. They're blind followers. They're told to do a certain thing and they just do it. And they repeat it over and over and over and over. They, they never question. question it. Yeah. They, they, they like, well, my sensei told me this, this is the way to do it. Um, and his sensei told him. I was like, well, why? Why, though? And, and people have stories that get handed down the dojo. And no one questions anything. No one is a student. Because a student will, I'd not say no one, but the, the, the vast majority, a student is the one that researches it. You know, if you're a, a chemical engineering student or whatever, and you're in university, you'll get given textbooks on your shown, your shown theories, and you have to investigate them. You have to come up with things as well yourself. Uh, and it's exactly the same in karate. I, I wonder, though, how much of an influence of it is a European versus Asian cultures as well, like because we're talking about karate here, which is obviously an Asian, Japanese, Okinawan martial art. And, and from what I've read, again, being a student, <laughs> uh, from the reading that I've done, is that you weren't to question your instructor. You were not to, um, you know, pose anything. You just take it and go with it uh, until, you know, you became a teacher or something like that. Whereas I think maybe it might be more of the Western men uh, mentality to have to feel that you even have the authority to question a teacher yeah i don't well, know i think i mean how far how far back have we looked at that because i mean good point let's take it to it to an analogy that i know as well right don't look at the the japanification of karate when mm. it became mainstream in all the schools and colleges and everywhere and stuff mm -hmm. um you look at master splinter with the turtles Mm -hmm. He taught them. He taught them ninjutsu, but he also left them to discover things as well and discover each other, discover things inside themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think good instructors do this. Um, I've spoken to we, we, our friend Sean Cameron. Sean Cameron Quinn says. Of also, I always used to say uh, he does Oyama karate. Cameron does Cameron karate. Scott mm -hmm. does Scott karate. Mm -hmm. Terry does Terry karate. So we're all doing our own version of karate. We learn the basics, then the principles, and then we're adding our own things and discovering our own things as well. Um, it, it, I used to think, because we look at the Ushideshi training and we've read Jed books and Nid, uh, says in Nicholas's book as well, mm -hmm. good friends with Jed. Jed came over and stayed with me for a while. So we had a, we had a good chat about this. And I said, didn't you, learn, didn't you do any bunkai in Hombu? Or, you know, and he said, no, you didn't do any bunkai in Hombu. Um, and I was like, well, didn't, didn't you get into the nuts and bolts of everything and stuff? And we were like, no, Sosai didn't teach that in, in Hombu for the Ushideshis. And, what, and, and Jed, no, was it Jed, have said, Jed said to me, he said, well, those three years are about becoming strong uh, and becoming ready, making the body strong. And then once you graduate as an Ushideshi, then you go start to learn karate and understand karate. Well, that it's makes the same as the, yeah. That that makes sense because I, I was just going to actually before that I was going to ask you the question, like when do you think a student and we're talking just specific karate now, uh, when the student should start questioning and because uh, that that's part of it too. Do, do they start questioning right at? you know, a uh, red slash orange belt or, or, you know, uh, or is it up to that? But, but just let me finish this one thought because I was thinking like, when you look at black belt, Shodan, Shodan is the beginning. That's, I, maybe you need that foundation up to there until you can really start question. Now you can start questioning. 
I don't know. Yeah. Just a thought. Well, that was always my understanding of, of Shodan, the beginner's beginner's level. Sure. Everything up to Shodan, that six, seven, eight years of training, it's just getting your body ready. It's just physically getting your body in a position where you can now start to really learn karate and understand karate and use it effectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, it is. So, so what I think about this this student thing and being a student, I think certainly at Shodan level, you should be questioning things. Not when an instructor says to do something, you go, uh, uh, no, I don't think that's right. I want you yeah, to explain to me now. That's, that's a good yeah, clarification. Yeah, that's that's, I don't think that's yeah, what we we're mean. We're not saying that. <laughs> we're not saying like, really? Really? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we're not saying that. But... Yeah, good point. Certainly when a session's finished or whatever, you ask your Shian, ask your instructor. Right. Go and ask them and say, oh, us, what, what, what's this movement or what's that movement for? If they're a the good instructor they can give you an answer. If they haven't got the answer, they'll say, that's a good question. Give me a week or two and I'll look into it and I'll speak to my higher ups and I'll find out. Because everybody's got their go-to people. One of my go-to people is Shian Cameron. Mm -hmm. If there's something I want to truly understand, I I message him. We have a a conversation back and forth. (laughs) I'm glad though we said that clarification because I just realized that's probably what people thought at the top. (laughs) Question your instructor. Do 20 push-ups. You do 20 now. push-ups. Like, Listen, I haven't come here to do push-ups. I've come here to learn karate. It's not wasting my time. Yeah, so it's more the philosophical of it. There's a time and, and place, yeah. Yeah, how much you want to get out of something. So I like what you're saying, like approach your yeah. instructor after. But the thing about things, though, the, like so a perfect, perfect example is kata. Right. Now, we've done kata, we've done movements and stuff, and, and we're taught certain bunkai's for it. But those, the bunk guys don't fit. You know, like, take Yuka Sono Rich. Boom, turn to the side, you're blocking a kick coming from the side. And it's, and people blindly follow it and go, that's what we're doing. I'm stood here facing you. This guy's come to kick me over here. <laughs> and I turn to the side and I block. See, I'm glad. But people don't. Yeah, they Come don't on. question it. So again, um, uh, Shihan, uh, Janine Davies and I, we were talking about this too because I was asking her about you know, does she do bunkai and stuff? And that's one of the reasons she doesn't dwell in it too, too much because everybody thinks they have the right answer and nobody really knows. And I was telling her, like, because my background before this was Kempo. Uh, mm-hmm. That's where I, I got my foundation, black belt and stuff, and and then doing Okinawan karate stuff. And it's interesting because we were, her and I were talking about Jodan Uke, where I was taught it was a strike and and, and yeah. off underneath the jaw. So the same thing, when you turn with, jo, uh, with a, um, uh, a Gaidon, uh it it was never a we were never taught this as a block no we were no we were taught this is you're turning it's hard to do on here but you're literally it's a throw you're taking somebody your leg is basically tripping them yeah, and you're yeah. taking them down and then you're following in with whatever so it's interpretation well, here's, a of, here's a bit of gold for you right a block is a lock is a blow is a throw exactly exactly that's not mine that's uh, Shane Cameron. <laughs> Shane Cameron told me this, and I've used it ever since. And you think about it. Every movement you do, Jordan Uke, Uchi Uke, Sota Uke, Gaydan Brai, Take it on it. Anything. A block is a lock, is a blow, is a throw. And, and that's and the way... think about that. And that's the way... And I think, again, you were talking about the difference uh, between Japanese mainland karate and Okinawan yeah. karate. Because Okinawan karate... Yeah. Like traditionally, whether it's Weichi or Goju or whatever the case may be, yeah. that is the way it's thought. Like it's you know the notion of this is a block is is that's not so how they teach it. Okay, okay means to receive. To receive the, exactly, the and in no, it, it means to receive it exactly, exactly. And that's how we were taught. Okay, like uh, yeah, it was to to receive, and it that is. could be yeah. Go ahead. But I've I've had I've had to step outside of Kyokushin. Right. Uh, uh, and go back, go back to the old books, read source-sized books. It's all in there. Step outside of Kyokushin, look at Goju-ryu, look at some short of Khan, look at Uchi-ryu, mm. look at the old stuff. When you mm. look at old Okinawan, like karate, tode, mm. there's nothing like Japanese karate. Nothing. You know? It's full of grabbing and throwing and twisting and locking and hitting. 
with you know when it went to when it went to mainland Japan, that was there in the beginning. But then they were like, well, that's judo and jujitsu. They do the grabbing. We want to do punching and kicking. And they stopped grabbing each other and, and just made it about punching and kicking. Hundred percent. They and that's actually true because they did have judo and stuff. So when he was uh, Funakoshi was formulating this, they wanted nothing to do. We have that. So, but we don't have yeah. striking. And they were so and they, they were, those bets. exactly, and they were very uh, intrigued by Western boxing. So now we have our own version of that. Yeah, it is, and, and now that's been perpetuated. It's gone on and on and on yeah. and on. So here we are in 2021. People doing karate that don't know how to grab, they don't know how to throw, they don't know how to take down, they don't know how to lock up, they don't know any of these things that are all within the kata. So now you just went totally full circle. So we're back to the student. So you have to have that student mind because I know there's a lot of people that get to a certain level. Well, I, I'm a Kyokushin black belt or whatever the case. But I know, I know my stuff. I don't need to learn about that. other. No, my philosophy yeah. is you just go to a jiu-jitsu class <laughs> or something. They're not interested. They don't want to know it because it's outside. They, they're in a comfort zone of yeah. punching and kicking. When you look, because in my dojo, in Ronin Dojo, we have three stage sparring. So we'll have normal knockdown. When we start sparring, we'll do normal knockdown to warm up, maybe a minute. Mm -hmm. Then we switch in with Kazushi. So mm -hmm. you're doing knockdown yep. with grabbing yep. and trying to throw and trying to take down so that we incorporate that with our training. That's awesome. And then you take, take it up another level then where we'll have open hand slaps. So you can hit to the head, around the head, plus the punching kick into the body, grabbing and throwing. So it, beca it becomes completely different. When you watch two knockdown fighters and they stood their arms there, loads of stuff kicking and punching going on. When you say, right, well, now we're going to slap each other in the face. Ooh. <sighs> arms are up and, and no one hardly does anything because now they're being hit in the face. Mm. completely changes your awareness well this and is think, a... well no please i was going to say you, you've got to do these things you've got to do it every arm technique on our syllabus is to the face so why are we only punching to the chest and kicking to the legs which is knockdown it's a part of it but surely the the student of karate will want to cover all bases want to cover all ranges you want to be comfortable, comfortable in a clinch, and you want to be comfortable on his back and comfortable everywhere. Well, yeah, I mean, we're treading off to different territories now. It could we could go down a road for like an hour just yeah, talking that, about that's this? Another show, another show. But but that being said, it, it is an important fact that we should you know um, shine a light on that. You know, uh, Kyokushin is the strongest karate in that, but at the end of the day, it has become a sport. Like no, no different than yeah. any other, you know, sport has become, and and you'll start losing focus on that. Um, I remember as a kid, um, my first martial art I took was ITF Taekwondo, and the instructor was so he he was hardcore, and it looked more like Kyokushin. Uh, it was it was very strong. It was very full contact. And um, he was he was big on conditioning and all this stuff. Though I was a kid, so we didn't do as much as the adults did, that I saw. But then when it um, it got adopted into as an Olympic sport and it be, and ITF was left behind, it went to World Taekwondo Federation. It changed. They don't resemble each other. They look They're completely different. Completely different. Completely different. Um, so, like, how important is that though? To like. I think it should be okay if somebody, I guess, just wants to be see the sports side of it, do the sports side of it. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't think it should be frowned on to be, to your point, the student always, and look to see if there's more to it that you can derive from it. To. You, you think, look how many, think how many seminars you've been to, maybe mm -hmm. quite a few camps and seminars. Mm -hmm. How many people do you see with a notebook at the end <laughs> of the session writing down some notes? very rare it's interesting you say that because as my sensei steve he talks about that importance of a notebook and that's how he call always call the notebook. yeah he's like yeah, after because you don't remember it you do that and you're like oh my god that was brilliant that was the best thing i've ever learned i'm never gonna forget that you by the time you get home you're like 
What, what did we do? I, it's like a, it's one of them, I and think, it's gone. I think, honestly, part of the problem with that, stuff People like with this, their phones, and, John, phones yeah. and technology, they have short attention spans, and they think that it'll be... It's retained somehow. Oh, it'll be on a video somewhere. I'll look at or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'll just download that and watch it later. Yeah. When I've, f- got, I've got my little notebook. I mean, I take my notebook when I'm teaching and when I'm when I'm learning on a seminar. And afterwards, I just jot down some bullet points to remind me of things. And if something I've been teaching and it's gone because I have a structure when I teach a seminar, but mm-hmm. it's very free, uh, very free flowing, and we end up doing all sorts of things. Uh, and then you're like, oh, that was really good. That was really good that this just came. I make a note of that ready for again. And then you, you, you've you got you've got your record. You can go back and be like, what was them throws now that we were doing in tight, the, the, the throw in Taiki Ubersonowicz? What was that? Look back through you and, ah, oh, that's it. And it'll jog your memory. Yeah, this is, man, this is really cool. This is actually reminding me to uh, another friend of mine owns a gym. Uh, unfortunately shut down now with the lockdown uh-huh. but um but he he started practicing this thing just just recently and he was telling me about this where saturday morning social media he gets caught up whatever he needs to do but then it's uh, all electronics not just social media phones turned off everything's off so he spends the rest of the weekend uh with his family so his wife and two kids or whatever mm-hmm. and he but he started carrying a notebook and he's like, he said, he's it's blowing his mind. He's like now doing things they never did, but like he's taking the time to analyze things. He's, you know, he's going back and reflecting on on messages or notes he's left himself and that. Mm. That, but so why didn't you do that before? You, we you had can all do it for the- everything. Do it for everything. I mean, I've got my karate notebook. I've also got my business notebook. If I have a a, a business conversation with someone, I'm taking notes mm-hmm. because then six um, six months down the line, they say. Oh, but you said you were going to take care of that. And I said, oh, let me check my notes. No, you said you were taking care of this by such and such date. It's in my notes. Mm-hmm. So use it for all aspects of life. So is it what, what's the advice then that you would give people to be that for, forever student? or? Yeah, just, just don't be afraid to question things. And when you do a movement, you need to be able to see what it is you're actually doing in your mind. Um, I've asked Xiang's in the past, uh, oh, you know, oh, Xian, what, what's this movement we're doing here in the Pinan San? What's this movement there? Oh, and I was told you're punching someone behind you. A, a, a fifth Dan told me that you're punching someone behind you. Uh, but, and I couldn't get my head around it because my mind was like, mm, I can't. I can't punch someone behind me. My chest, my bicep is on my chest. I can't go past my well, you're, head. You're a beast of a man. How are you going <laughs> to? <laughs> you won't get this around me. <laughs> and it made me think, and I'm like, what are we doing? And I've had to step outside of it and be like, oh, actually, it's a throw. Mm-hmm. It, looks like it's, it looks like it's a punch movement or an elbow, but it's actually a throw. And then you think, oh. And then it opens up everything. And then you, you start to look at everything differently and start to say, what am I doing? When you do a kata, if you can perform it beautifully crisp and super sharp stuff and you've won first place at kata competitions, it's fantastic, great. But what are you doing? I've always said in kata competitions, I think you should do your kata. Then there should be a rerun through and you should be showing the bunkai of what you're doing. Oh, wow. That would be... <laughs> that should be it. Because otherwise, it's just a dance. You're doing a dance if you don't understand the movements you're doing. I think this is a, a, an awesome conversation. That we, I wish we could go further because now you're even reminding me of other things. I, and I, I, I only can paraphrase it, but I remember reading, again, being a student, reading, uh, Kemwa Mabuni, founder of Shito. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I forget what the number he placed to it, but he, he was like, people don't realize that like, like X was a really high, like 90% of karate is throws, grappling, yeah. twisting, joint manipulation. It was like this much was actually it's like striking. And now we've, it's totally gone on its head. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's interesting. You know, we know we say kumite when mm-hmm. everyone does kumite and they immediately go into knockdown. And it's like, that's not, that's knockdown. What does kumite mean? And you say to people, oh, what's kumite? Fighting. 
But what say, what is kumi te? Well, that's that's a good point. So te is fist, hand, hand, hand. So what's kumi? Yeah. Entangled. Oh. Kumi is like entangled. So it's not standing there punching and kicking out the range. It's, it's entangled. getting involved and getting entangled and grabbing and hitting and putting down. That's so interesting. I, and I think I think That's it's a big. Um, it's not a secret. I'm writing a book called uh, Forgotten Kyokushin, mm. and in there is going to be all these bits and stuff that I've learned and discovered and rediscovered along the way. Uh, you know, the same with the old. And there's a section in the book called No Japanese. So some people don't speak any Japanese, but I think you need to know what certain words mean, mm-hmm. like hikite. Mm-hmm. When you hear the word hikite, okay, you know that that's the hand back there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what people forget what it is that we're doing. Hike te. So it's something hand, and it's that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pulling hand. It's the pulling hand. So this hikite that you bring back here all the time isn't to hit someone behind you, and it isn't to create some super force field that goes around your body to drive the other arm forward faster. Okay, so before you go, so the way I was taught in Kempo, again, that yeah. the hikite was either to pull your hand out of something or yeah. to... Um, to to twist and grab somebody down into grab someone to anchor right. them it's to like anchor them hands. yes to anchor yeah. them pull you yeah yeah it's like pull it away or, or you pull we do it every time we do basics you pull someone onto the shot mm. but i think hikite is a whole nother show to be honest because we can talk mm. about that for half an hour on like it. any of these yeah on that point how where are we now in terms of time i don't want to drag people on here i think, I think we're about 25 minutes so in the, on saying that, I think then, yeah, don't be afraid to question things, learn things uh, and look at it and go, what the hell is that? What are we doing? And then when someone says to you, oh, yeah, well, that's you jump over that you jump up and you kick someone off a horse. And, you know, these are the things that you're told, you know, in, in a cafe where you cover you're blocking the sun out of your eyes <laughs> and then you're striking. And think about it. Think what would that be in a real fight? What, what, yeah. what would happen in a real fight? And keep mm-hmm. that student mentality. As Pat's named the book, Forever the Student. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Pat. Shihan, dropping knowledge bombs. Oh, bombs of golden <laughs> nugget bombs. <laughs> All right, guys. I think that brings us to the end. Please hit that like button. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Everything helps. Share it. Uh, you know, we really want to build this and get a conversation going. And you guys can be a part of it. So leave comments in in the uh, in, down below. And you, you know, too, perhaps yeah. we'll yeah. And if there's something cool, we'll we'll t- you know bring it up. Uh, uh, give you props. Um, uh, uh, bring up your name yeah. and uh, yeah, for sure. So please, everything helps. All right. Yeah. Friday. Stay student. And stay dangerous. Us. <laughs>